It's only the first quarter of 2021, but we've already seen several impressive phones in the market. This includes the Redmi Note 10 Pro, which was launched in Malaysia earlier this month. This mid-range phone has some major upgrades over its predecessor and some interesting specs that you usually only find on uh, flagships. So let's just get to the review. The first upgrade the Note 10 Pro has over the Note 9 Pro is its 120Hz AMOLED display. With an AMOLED panel, Redmi is giving you a better screen experience with brighter colors, higher contrast, and deeper blacks. Navigating on your phone is also smoother thanks to the high refresh rate and readability under the sun is alright. The only slight issue I notice is the redder tint that some may not see unless they compare it to other phones. You'll also see a huge change in the design. The Note 9 Pro used to have its camera set up in the center, but the Note 10 Pro is now more similar to what we've seen on the flagship Mi 11. The cameras are further emphasized on the camera bump and the 108 megapixel lens is highlighted with a thick silver frame. This phone is available in three colors. The one we have here is the Onyx Gray. It comes with a reflective and shiny finish, Plus, it's lighter and thinner than the Note 9 Pro. Now, some of you may be aiming for a 5G ready phone. If so, the Redmi Note 10 Pro is not for you. It's equipped with a Snapdragon 732G chipset paired with 8GB of RAM and 128GB of storage. And while it performs well in simple tasks and playing certain games, it doesn't come with 5G support. I enjoyed smooth gaming sessions when it comes to PUBG and Call of Duty Mobile, but this isn't for Genshin players. Even when the graphics is set to low, the game lags and the phone overheats quickly if you are playing Genshin Impact. Another upgrade in the Note 10 Pro is the rear cameras. The main camera used to be a 64 megapixel lens, but now it's 108 megapixel. This is accompanied by an 8 megapixel ultra wide lens, a 5 megapixel tele macro lens, and a 2 megapixel depth sensor. High res images are bright and sharp, colors are accurate, but if you want even more vibrant tones, you can just switch on the AI mode. Ultra wide shots has good details, but the corners are noticeably distorted and the colors aren't consistent. Plus, brighter areas tend to overexpose. Macro shots are up to standard. Colors are true to life and sharp. Even though Redmi calls it the tele macro lens, the quality of zoom in shots are subpar. When it comes to bokeh effect, I actually find it nicer on the front camera as the rear portrait shots have harsher edges. But when it comes to selfies, you really need to avoid backlighting to get better shots. Otherwise, the 60 megapixel lens does well in colors and details. Even though the Note 10 Pro can supposedly do better in low light photography, the results were not up to expectations. Noise level is high, there's a huge loss of details, and it's not significantly brighter either. Last but not least, we've got the same 5020 mAh battery in the Note 10 Pro. The only improvement is a slightly faster charging from 30W to 33W. You can game extensively with this phone, but don't expect it to last you a whole day if you do. Getting to 100% from 50% took me about 40 minutes, so full charge should take around an hour or more. For Rp ringgit, the Redmi Note 10 Pro makes a worthy competitor to other phones in its segment. It's even more affordable than the Note 9 Pro that was launched at the same price but has lesser RAM. Sure, it has some setbacks like no um, 5G, no Wi-Fi 6 and mediocre low light shots but it also has a 120Hz AMOLED display, a 108MP camera and a chipset that can handle most tasks. Um, simply put, this phone offers value for money. So that's the review of the Redmi Note 10 Pro. If you plan to purchase this phone, do let us know how you feel about it in the comment section down below. As usual, give this video a thumbs up if you like it and remember to subscribe to our channel KLGTV and I'll see you in the next one.